I'm writing this to let you know that I've been seeing things differently. It's still winter, but around here it feels like spring. And every day, I've been eating fruit straight from the tree, sitting out in the sun, and reading Rilke's letters on Cezanne. I think creating is really just sort of like collecting. We collect words and colors and images and put them all on a shelf next to each other, and then stand back and see what we've made. Right now, I'm collecting these moments along with the colors of an early spring, lines which meander and converge and tell stories, and words which also try to. I wanted to tell you about the letters, because I know you'll love them too. I find it hard to explain what sort of effect they've had on me, but I'll try. Like, for instance, I couldn't read a single word of them indoors, because it somehow felt wrong. Like I had to be directly under the sun to understand. I felt almost like I owed it to him, him having experienced so much rain during that time, and talking of the sun being merely the place where the sun used to be. And the only color he mentions there is that of the geraniums, which he says shout the contradiction of their red into the mist. And yet when he talks of the paintings, he describes color in a way that makes you feel like you've fallen inside of it. And as he writes, you should see this, I wonder if he could have known that I almost can. Sometimes I read and it's just reading, but other times I read and everything seems to disappear. This is the sort of reading that does that to you. Sometimes I can't help it, I read out loud just to hear it. I've always loved the sound of words being spoken out loud, and I searched to try to find an audio recording of Rilke talking or reading one of his poems, but no such recording exists. There is, however, a description of how he read which goes like this. Rilke read in a very characteristic manner, always standing up, in a voice capable of infinite modulations, which sometimes arose to an amazingly sonorous volume in a strange singing tone that strongly stressed the rhythm. One could have listened to him forever. It was remarkable what long pauses he made, then he would slowly bow his head, almost closing his heavy eyelids, and one could hear the silence as one hears the pauses of a Beethoven sonata. After having spent a number of days like this in the sun reading these letters, I feel almost embarrassed at having ever done anything else, at having treated such moments as something to be saved for special occasions. And I wonder if you notice it too, how we so often prohibit ourselves these feelings, placing a thick layer of unaffected and acceptable matter between ourselves and the earth. Maybe it's just me, but does it feel to you like there is some unspoken rule that we are supposed to pretend to be separate from this, or at least keep quiet about it? Like it would be silly to find things incredibly beautiful, to be amazed, to love poetry, to read out loud and sing and write and say whatever comes to mind. Like somehow we should all be in agreement that the best version of this, of being here, is being thought normal and relatable and avoiding any judgment that we might be crazy or think quite a lot of ourselves. I am starting to find it almost painful to live in this manner, which is so different from that of all God's other creatures. Do you know what I mean by this? Here's a passage which states more beautifully what I am trying to get at. We compute the years and divide them here and there, and stop and begin and hesitate between both. But how of one piece is everything we encounter, how related one thing is to the next? how it gives birth to itself and grows up and is educated in its own nature. And all we basically have to do is be, but simply, earnestly, the way the earth simply is, and gives her consent to the seasons, bright and dark and whole in space, not asking to rest upon anything other than the net of influences and forces in which the stars feel secure. These and a million other thoughts came to mind as I read the letters, and maybe we can talk about it next time we see each other. I know you probably have things to do, and my hand is getting tired, and I know that this ends. But I fold the pages neatly in half, and then we both get up, I from writing and you from reading, and we go on and we live our lives with maybe some piece of this sticking to us.
at least through the rest of winter and spring.